driver. So today I have a 2010 Mazda 6 here. And I'm going to show you how to check your fuel injector. Okay, so I show you the quickest way, just in case you don't have, have the proper tool to check it, I'm going to show you the quickest way to check it. But this is a 2010 Mazda 6, so it depends on the car you have. Maybe you have a problem, So, but I'm going to show you on this specific car. So the first thing you want to do, you want to make sure you dust, remove most of the dust from here first. Um, and unplug all your ignition coil just for the um, space. You want to remove all the connection just to get space. You're going to remove the, these right here, the injector plug. You can see right here it's four. This is a four cylinder, so I'm just gonna move our four ignition um, injector plug first. Okay, make sure I move it, move it enough out the way. That means I can lift up the the um the fuel rail. So right now you, you can see the the fuel rail right here. I have two 10 millimeter bolt. I'm gonna remove those and then prise it up from there. Okay. Just take your time because I don't wanna strip these. Time move it if you if, if you have a hard time you gotta use like a a, a, a small baby crowbar like this you want to take time you don't want to break nothing So what I'm doing right now, just in case it ought to come off, I'll just use some brake cleaner just to spray it up a little bit. Spray it down in the, the bottom of the, the injector connection, I mean, you know, where the injector is, just to kind of give it a cleaner. Get the, you know, most of the, the dirt out of the creases. I'm going to check your, your fuse box for the, the fuse for the fuel. It would be like, for this car, it would be saying 20 fuel. Fuel pump will be 25. Fuel pump fuel will be 25 amps. Okay, there you go. So remove this. We're gonna put it down safely. I just gonna remove back one of these um wires just for me to get enough space. As I say, I just want to pull it out just to give it a quick test. So I'm just going to remove back this wire. That's when I re remove the rail, I get enough length to do the testing. So this is the fuel rail. I get some gas leaked out, but I remove the, I remove the fuel, so it helps a little bit. So what I'm going to do right now, with these holes, just got to be careful. You don't want, to, you don't want dirt to go down in the cylinder. So if you can, you can clean it up before. I use a little, light paper to clean it out so what i'm gonna do right now is just trying to move the now i could at least easily remove the fuel inject tech injector but i gotta connect back to do the testing so it seems like it's best just to remove the connection first put put the rail aside and do do it just as it is right now okay so i'm gonna just pull this out one by one Just get the as I say, what you want to do, you want to balance, you want to level it when you're taking it out. I'm just trying to rack it a little by a little. Taking my time racking it out. Okay, there you go. So there's a seal 
these definitely is important okay one in the bottom and one in the top just in case you got to use about these you got to remember you want to make sure this is in the bottom and sorry about that this is in the bottom this is a seal and one is on top for the fuel coming from the fuel line to feed it down to the cylinder okay so now we're gonna test it real quick what we're gonna do right now just gonna spray it off real quick with some brake cleaner so. okay so this one came off was in the rail so yeah i gotta put it back this is coming from the the, 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 the line so just take your time put it back just like that so they got a hot something hard to go in back so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna just spray the just spray it on the top some lubricant oil just to make it um very easily to press back in the fuel you know just a little bit okay you now these are very it's been a long time a day in the car so so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna give them a quick test just to see if anyone reading lower than anyone and any so I don't see any leak, so I'm just gonna see if anything reading. We got a multimeter here, just gonna put it to 200 and black to black, red to red. Just gonna test it really quick before I do any changing. So, what I did, I get two alligator pins. And connect let me um, show you connect to the fuel injector this one the first one reading 12.7 the reason why I do the alligator pins because I want to make sure everything stick you know everything is just basically clamping properly I don't want to just use these by itself and then it's messing up the reading so now steady reading 12.7 all right I'm gonna try the other one now Okay, the second one is 12.9, just a difference of two. But well, 12.9, still okay. Third one, 12.9, still not bad. The other one, 12.9. So basically, everything seems to be good. I'm going gonna, gonna to check the first, first one. The first one, just to make sure again. Okay, so all these three right here, not the first one. Not the first one. All these three is 12.9, level out to 13.0 all these three this is 12.8 i got a new thing and replace this the, the this one the new one for this one because i see it seems like this one is mal malfunctioning you're just reading 12.8 and all these reading 13.0 okay so i'm gonna give it a shot try to change this and trying to change this one and see if i get a get the engine to run better So what I do, I just remove the iron piece, the arm, the the clamp from the rail, and just connect it. I mean, the clamp from the oil injector, and just connect it, connect it back to the new fuel injector right now. All right, just press it on. Make sure it's click. These you want to bend these a little bit. That means when you push it on the rail, you click, and it should be good. Make sure you have the pallets like this. You still want to just you want to mash. You want to just just press it a little bit like this. Play with it. You want to press it here. In. Make sure your rubber is sealed on properly. I will put a little grease around it. Spray a little um, lubricant on here just to make it easier to go inside. I would, I would before I start to connect back everything. I would make sure I spray these one more time. Just the top of it. Alright, everything is good. I put it on. You just want to make sure you get a click. 
pocket driver. So once you get it on back, you want to do it like this. You want to make sure everything is fitting properly and you rock it. Rock it until the screw is all meshed together. Okay? Slowly. Then watch the seals. And once you know it's go all the way in, then it can also start connect. But you got to make sure it go, it go all the way inside. So you don't want to do it too tight, but you want to do it tight enough. Don't over tight it. You know what I mean? That. And now you're going to connect back your wires. Connect back the fuel injector plugs. Make sure you get it clicking. Remember your fuse, okay? Your fuel or uh, pump fuse. I'm gonna turn on the vehicle just to test, see how it run. Okay, so it's, it's running a little better, but just gonna give it a test drive on the road and see how, how, if it really run better. Right now, I don't have no shaking, so that's a good thing. So hopefully that new fuel injector fix the problem. Okay, hopefully this works. Thank you, and you know, leave a comment, share the video. Have a good day.